the people that are looking for a home, first time home buyers, people that have been looking to upsize. Um, you know, I think that, and correct me, Greg, but I, I feel that this is whether they do it or not, I think this is the time that you should be absolutely looking in the market. Maybe not mm-hmm. going with a locking in a fixed rate uh, mortgage, which, you know, Scotia as of midnight is going to, you know, four and a half percent. You're listening to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast with your hosts, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Hey, let's, yes. uh, let's do this. Welcome to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast, everybody. My name is Greg Campbell. I'm a realtor and uh, managing director at the agency Ottawa. And today I'm with David Warren, who is a uh, mortgage agent and owner at Referral Mortgages. How you doing, David? Sir, pretty good. We're down. Uh, we're down, Paul. This week, we we were down. You last week. We're you know, if uh, if the cycle continues, I'll be down next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. it's um, yeah, it's it's interesting. But hey, man, it's uh, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on here. I'm happy to be back, though. Absolutely. I'm happy to be back. You know, I got to say, I am going to say something. I had COVID. I'm going to let everyone know. I had COVID and it literally took me four weeks to be full, like what I would consider fully recovered and feeling 100%. Four weeks. It's, uh, it was very, very interesting. So um, just letting you know, if you get it, you may go through the same thing that I went through. You may not. But uh, yeah. a week of complete disaster and then three weeks of just Lingering. fogginess. Fogginess. Well, you're back. You're back. back. You're back. You got energies back. We're good. We're rolling. We're good. Let's uh, let's get into this. So we have a lot of little things going on. We have comments from people uh, who've, who've commented on our podcast, obviously, on our previous episodes. There's a lot of questions. I have some personal things that I've seen online that I, I kind of want to review. Dave, what do you think you want to start with here? I, I think let's start with the Korea post. The one that I was telling you about. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, let's do it. I'm going to just let me get to it here. So this post came up. Uh, it, it's something that Korea put out and a friend of mine, good friend of mine shared it on her page. And, you know, I was a little disappointed in Korea for, for posting this. Uh, so it's, uh, you know what? I, I'm sorry. It's not Korea. It was Stats Canada. It was Stats Canada that put this out in a statement through CMHC. Hmm. Wait a minute. Hold on. Stats are all taken from the public Stats Canada website, the Korea website, and okay, so three Stats Can, Korea. Okay, we're good. And CMHC. So here we go. I'm going to read it. According to Stats Canada, the average household income in Canada is $66,000. The average income of a single person household is $34,000. This is the average income in Canada. Keep in mind here. The average price of a home in Canada is now $816,000, almost 100% increase in six years. Right. So I'm not going to get into this too much. It goes into affordability calculations and, and all of this. Now, you know, there's no question that we know, I mean, we talk about it too much and we hope that everybody keeps listening and that they understand what we're saying, but we know that we are at the peak of a cycle. It's going to, we feel it's going to slow down. Um, and then you get numbers like this now where people are all af- afraid of the market, afraid to buy, afraid of the situation. But we're looking at 66,000 as an average household income in Canada and 816,000 as an average price. Now, but wh- wh- what does that mean? It's like in Ottawa, the average price is about 875 for a home. Average household income is what, 110,000? Mm-hmm. So in, in the 66,000 uh, average household income market, what's the price of a house there? You know, in the lower market, it's like 400, 400, less 200, 250. You're looking in the right. Maritimes, you're looking in the uh, prairies. Yeah. And, uh, and I've got, you know, a good buddy of mine who's a realtor in Fredericton. And so I see the numbers of what they have and, and you're getting places in the 200 to 300,000 range um, and nice single detached homes. It's not, that's not uncommon. So yeah, I think to your point that this is a blanket statement and people read this and just look at that disparity of numbers and not actually break it down that Vancouver and Toronto drive those numbers. Yeah. They and Ottawa been. now a bit, I right? Mean, but I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's you, know, you, you have like the, the, the thing that people kind of don't 
or that they forget is that Toronto and Vancouver and Ottawa, but mostly Toronto, the number of transactions that there are in that market on an annual basis covers the entire Maritimes as a whole and likely prairies as far as number of transactions on an annual basis. So obviously their higher price point is going to bring that average up. Same as Vancouver. Um, You know, I think in, I think in a market like Fredericton, it's something like a couple thousand, a few thousand transactions a year um, in that market. We get that in a month um, in ours, in Ottawa, let alone Toronto. So I think, I think that's where there's that, you know, but we're looking at average income across the entire country of the population of 38 million uh, that we're at. So it's, um, they definitely lead the numbers astray and don't, and don't really break it down too much. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it goes into a thing here saying, if you use the CMHC housing affordability calculator for an average of 66,000 with a 50 K down payment, you would, you can get a house of about 300,000. And, you know, if you want to get a home that's over 800,000, you need about a hundred, uh, earn about 134,000, have a hundred K down payment. Um, this is like using the housing affordability calculator on the mm-hmm. CMHC side, I guess. So it's kind of like, you know, they say that, so that's fine. But then people read the headline thinking like, well, that, you know, I make 66,000 here in Ottawa. I'll never be able to buy a house. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, not thinking of, you know, planning or looking at other options or opportunities, right? Like my, in my reply, I said, you know, if you can't do that here and you can work remotely, why not move to the Maritimes and work from there and buy something for 400,000. That's an amazing property, you know, or if not yeah. get into some of these other little, just get into some other investments, but it's still that, um, I think everybody's getting upset because a lot of people still have it in their head that home ownership is like their way out of something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like their retirement. If I own my home, I can retire later, which is not necessarily the case. Right. But a lot of people still have that embedded in their head that that's the only thing that they, they need to do to survive is own property. And and it's kind of interesting because Canada has, for whatever reason, it's not just, you know, people try blaming it's realtors faults. You know, we had that comment all over that it's a realtor's fault that prices keep going up. Nothing to do with, you know, supply and demand actually it. is what, what, you know, dictates price. So what somebody wants to pay for a chocolate bar, if you have less chocolate bars, the price is going to go up. Um, but the, but the fact that Canada has of the G7 nations and even in the world, one of the highest owner, home ownership rates per capita, whereas Europe, US, you don't have this, even the US, you don't have the same home ownership. It's mostly investors and people rent all through Europe. People don't own those properties. If you go to Italy, you go to anywhere in Europe, prices for a condo are millions. People don't own them. They mm-hmm. rent them for you know that couple 1,500 euro, 2,000 euro uh, a month. Right. The prices don't align and it's not, and they don't own their home for whatever reason in Canada. And it, I, and I think it's a multitude of factors over the years, but we're really pushed and, and that mindset's created of, like you said, that Home ownership is what's going to get me to retirement, and that's it. Um, yeah, and, and like, you know, and nothing else. It, it's like, it, it's it, it's people. It's like, what are you going to do if something changes? Like, what are you going to what are you going to do? What are you going to do if your mm-hmm. house, uh, you know, if there's a war, if your house blows up, you got, you know, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm just a big believer in having a few things going on. Obviously, I know property is. I mean, you know, I don't think there's going to be a war here anytime, but. Um, yeah, it blows my mind. And, w- and the thing that's, you know, that post that she share, uh, put up, uh, 47 people shared that, right. Mm-hmm. That's how, that's how it gets around. And a lot of people who read things like that well, don't take the time or speak to professionals about what's really going on for their situation in the neighborhood that they want to buy in. They just look at it as like, ah, oh, it's not going to happen. And then they sit back and read more of these headlines that keep coming at them. Like, Oh, it's, it's terrible. Like you, you, affordability is through the roof. You're never going to be able to own. It's the end of the world. And, and it's just, and it's just headline reading. Like I will say, even on our latest, uh, from last week's episode, our headline was rates increased again. People don't read it. The amount of vitriol, you know, 30 comments on our, on the Facebook breakout, which is just like a, a, a short clip and people, and there's tons of people, just negative comments. Uh, about the market, people not actually listening to the episode or or yeah. informing themselves. They're just reading the headline and then spewing, 
you know, hatred or, or what have you. And it, and it happens. And so, you know, like you said, with this article of 47 times being shared, the amount of comments and the amount of people just reading that headline, not actually informing themselves is, is unfortunate because there are many different aspects. And like you said, that affordability calculator, breaking it down of at 66,000, 50,000 down, you can buy a house at 300,000. Well, actually that's exactly what's happening in those markets. The families are making 66,000 or 60,000 in the markets like Moncton and St. John or in the prairies and mm-hmm. Saskatoon, and they're buying homes at 300,000. That's exactly what's happening. Um, you know, it's not, it, yeah. it's kind of, they're giving it's like blanket like, statements. And not, yeah. It's not like the per, the 66,000 household income is uh, living in Ottawa trying to buy a million dollar property. Yeah. yeah. And, and there are some people that absolutely have, you know, they're, they're in Ottawa or they're in Toronto and they're, that's their household income. Um, you know, but it, but there are, you know, there are other opportunities. Maybe home ownership isn't always necessarily for somebody, or that's your starting income because maybe you're new to Canada and you're, it's a stepping stone to another, uh, you know, future employment where that income goes up. Um, I see it all the time, you know, clients new to Canada coming, taking a job and, and really within a matter of years being, you know, few years being up into significantly higher, um, pay increases, but they get into a small condo to start, um, mm-hmm. or they just hold off and save and, and they know, and we set up that track, that, that, uh, that game plan for a few years. Um, people kind of look at it as like, what can I afford immediately now? I want everything now, now, and not like setting that game plan or yeah. setting up, uh, you know, what really makes sense for them, you know, cause not everyone is homeownership isn't for everyone either. Like renting, there's actually a lot of uh, studies out there and a lot of, um, a lot of numbers out there that renting can actually be beneficial for individuals too, from, from yeah. an allocation of funds and savings and less stress or, or yeah, ability exactly. to move, you know, and not be tied I to one location, things like that. On my real estate reality channel, the, uh, the new stuff starts coming out next week. And that's one of the ones that I talk about renting versus owning. It's pretty, uh, it's exactly saying that like I have a couple of uh, scenarios and, you know, I get into it. Um, there you go. I was going to get into this uh, little thing here, just about the affordability side of things again. Mm-hmm. I know I've, I've spoken about it a bit. The um, the blockchain stuff that they have in Europe, uh, you know, I was saying you can own shares, right? Mm-hmm. Through crypto ownership. And I didn't know this, but there's one in the US right now called lofty.ai. And you can be an investor for as low as $50 and you can sell at any time. So they have um, tokens allocated for each property that they have. You can start with a minimum of $50 and you can invest into, uh, I don't know what the the upper level is, but into the thousands, I imagine. And the rate of return looks pretty good. Like we got like 18.9%, 16.8%. These homes are all in, um, it's interesting. This is all in Ohio, Illinois, Tennessee, uh, Missouri. But uh, it's a pretty busy site. They've got, uh, I think they've got about 20 active listings right now. And um, so, so sorry. So you're, um, so this is for investors to buy, to invest yeah, in, so to buy a share in a rental property or an investment property? In a property? rental property. Yeah. Got it. It's similar to that <clears throat> cool. one that I was telling you guys about from um, uh, that company out of the UK. I can't remember what they're called again, but mm. for them, it's a minimum of a thousand pounds down. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think I'm going to get in on that and check it out because they're, they're growing pretty quickly. But this is great. It's like, you know, let's, mm. y- you want to invest, you got 10,000. Fractional 000 ownership. Re- exactly. Mm-hmm. You want to invest, you got 10,000. Um, you don't want to wait to save to get a, get a home. You don't have it in your head that you need the home. You're happy renting. You know, you, you put 10K into a couple of these things. Like, I mean, hey, it's sitting there. It's, it's got a good return. They guarantee it. You can sell it at any time if you want to. There's some, the cool thing about these blockchains ones is that you can sell your share at any time. There's one in Ontario called Addy that works out of, uh, I think they have, they have builds in Quebec and Ontario. They don't have that many out though, but then they'll have like 500,000 allocated to investors. So the re- I find the rate of return isn't as high as these blockchain based platforms, mm-hmm. but I mean, there's, there's options, you know, yeah. people got no, really to cool. figure it out. Yeah. I, f- I imagine the market that, 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 uh, Companies focusing on of Missouri and and things like that, uh, Tennessee. They're they're lower price point homes, but they mm-hmm. but the rental rates are still pretty good. So you're getting a that's probably where they're getting that gr- good rate of return. Um, yeah, that <clears throat> it's definitely a very interesting concept. And I mean that fractional ownership 
idea came in on the equities market where you've got companies like yeah. Wealth Simple, et cetera, where you know you've got Google, you've got Amazon trading at or Shopify at three thousand, two thousand dollars a share for the average retail and trader. Um, you know, being able to own or purchase a share, a single share is sometimes insurmountable or is, you know, that's too much or, or crazy. And so that's why a lot of uh, companies will do stock splits. They'll, you know, do a 20 mm-hmm. to one, 10 to one stock split to bring that price down below a hundred dollars because that's where it's attainable for the everyday trader. But companies like, well, simple, they came out and said, well, let's do fractional ownership. And so you can buy you know, fifty dollars of of Google that's trading at twenty three hundred bucks. You can buy you know a fractional ownership of that share, and 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 they match you up with others. So it's kind of taking that same concept, which is pretty cool. I think it uh, it opens up the market for a lot of people that, like you said, minimum fifty dollars yeah. investment. I mean, allows you to diversify, get into the market, even if you're you know renting or even if you own, but you know don't have the savings for for rentals. I think that's really really neat. It's, it is, it's good. And it's good that these companies have come out with that in mind. Like they're actually, mm. you know, putting the consumer first um, and trying to find workarounds. So people, you know, don't get misled and don't get scared <laughs> as they do. Yeah. But yeah, like even, even our cottage is fractional, you know, we yeah. get five weeks a year and we love it. You know, it's yeah. basically a million dollar chalet on the river. Mm. I'm not going to buy that and I'm not going to use it all that much either. Right. So we get our yeah. five weeks. For us, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to become a lot more common in general. Um, like I know there's some companies working with properties out of, out of uh, you know, more of the, the tropical locations, mm-hmm. fractional ownership. You know, you can buy places in uh, <laughs> like where, where you were at Fort Myers. I think you can yeah. buy like homes for like 2.5. So like they go in with like six buyers. I mean, you're still paying like, you know, yeah. 400,000 or whatever, or 350 with some uh, management fees and association fees, but for some people it works, right? Well, it's, it's kind of the, taking the, that timeshare idea a little bit, yeah. where instead of a company doing where you're stuck, because the problem with timeshares that you get sold, like, people usually get sold on and it still happens, but you can't get out, you can't get out of them. You can't sell them. They're, they're mm, so exactly. hard to, to get rid of your ownership in a timeshare and you're locked in for 25 years or what have you. Um, whereas this is allowing you to invest in somewhere, you know, this cottage fractional ownership that you, that you have, or even just the mm-hmm. investment side for these, it's allowing you to get in and, and, but have that ability to, to liquidate at a moment's notice if you, if you want, which is, which is very, going to be very yeah. enticing. I hope that really spreads. I think that's an awesome idea. We'll let, we'll definitely make a point of posting that, uh, that company link in the, uh, in the bio for people. Yeah. And I mean, you know, for, for the price that they got, like, I mean, I may as well jump in on some of these. I'm going to, I'm going to start <laughs> learning about these markets a bit, you know, but I mean, seriously though, to drop like, you know, even 500, like yeah. in a token into it, like whatever, why not? Yeah. It's like, see what, see what happens. Um, anyways. Now, now cool. circling what? back to the, the Ottawa market and the, there's a uh, a question from he's he's a regular he's got a regular his regular question B Charon um, great question and it'll kind of lead into where we are uh, some maybe some high level numbers as far as where you've seen the market at uh, Greg but um, B Charon is asking uh, I guess as long as supply in Ottawa remains low prices will uh, keep going up regardless of interest rate rises. Do we even have a one month supply of homes on the MLS which is far from a balanced market? Do we? Do you guys think that there's a, will be a surge of buyers from now until June first before the next rate hike? And it guesses how how high average home prices will rise in 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, as far as people jumping in before the next rate hike, certainly fixed rates are going up, and and I got a notice from Scotia today that they're you know going up again at midnight tonight for them. Um, those are fixed rates. You know, the rate hike uh, in June is related to the variable, the Bank of Canada overnight lending rate, which affects bank prime for variable rates. Um, I, d- I think right now with the, where interest rates are going as far as continuing to climb for now, um, I think we're going to get, you know, a lot of those, um, a, a good number of investor clients will kind of hold off and keep their money in cash and, and wait Um or that, that where they will have typically refinanced and accessed equity in their home to leverage, to buy another property. A lot of them will be gun shy in order to do that. 
Uh, so I think there will be a number of people outside of the market on, you know, with regards to that, the people that are looking for a home, first time home buyers, people that have been looking to upsize, um, you know, I think that, and correct me, Greg, but I, I feel that this is whether they do it or not. I think this is the time that you should be absolutely looking in the market, maybe not mm -hmm. going with a locking in a fixed rate, uh, mortgage, which, you know, Scotia as of midnight is going to, you know, four and a half percent on a five-year fix. However, going with a variable rate mortgage, even though they're going to be, you know, rate increasing again, and, you know, likely at the next announcement in June, like uh, Bisharal mentioned, but getting into that so that as rates plateau and the bond rate comes back down, because, you know, that is going to happen. It's very cyclical and, and um, that you can then, you know, lock in at a lower rate or refinance at that time by having that variable rate mortgage. But I think those that are sitting on the mar on the sidelines, and we've talked about it before uh, in, you know, at many episodes uh, about you've got the, <laughs> you got the people that sit on the sidelines waiting for the market to come down mm -hmm. uh, and prices to stabilize or more options or not having to compete in multiple offers or not, or be able to include conditions and then you've got right now what's happening is rates going up. The lo there is more supply on the, on the market. Mm -hmm. People can get conditions, can get mm -hmm. pretty good deals, um, but are gun shy because now rates. And so, you know, because rates are going up and they're, they're worried about rates. Um, and so it's kind of interesting that, <laughs> that those people, and we always talk about those are the same people that will just not buy. But what are you seeing as far as numbers right now, Greg, as far as on the market? You know, like you mentioned, do we even have a one-month supply? Um, where are we or what have you been seeing in the past couple of weeks yeah, for, for trend of uh, listings? You know, a, a one month supply, I think we're close to that or we're getting close okay. to that. The, the average days on market is creeping up on 10 okay. across the city, which I think is amazing. Because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that was four or five days for quite a long time. Um, there's a lot of listings citywide right now coming out. And it's one of these things, the last couple of weeks since that first rate hike has been really interesting to see. Like I have a listing in Cumberland that we, you know, a few months ago would have just flown off mm. the market like in a second. Now it, it hasn't sold. Um, so we're just reassessing like what we're going to do right now. Um, and I have another one coming up in Orleans and it's a big one. And a couple of weeks ago, I said, your price point is between x amount and then everything started changing and then i went back to see them the other day as we're getting ready to launch the listing and they said so what's the price i'm like well we'll, we'll decide on the price the day that we list it you know because i told them i said i can't what i what i told you the range was two weeks ago it's not the same range anymore mm. um in order to get a quick sale that is and what i am finding is although the um, average percentage list price to sales price still is sitting around 110%. So the average is still high. Like it's going over mm -hmm. list on some of these. A lot of those are driven by bigger properties uh, with people with more money um, on the high end. Uh, but it's still around 110%. But the list prices are lower than what they were a few months ago. So, it, you know what I mean? Although it kind of yeah. looks like everything's the same, but the list the list price is lower. So the, the sales price will still be high versus the list price. But if you're listing a home 50,000 less than what you were in February, you know, eventually the averages start, start going down a bit, just like they did mm -hmm. in 2021 around the same time. So I think, I think it's going to be a great spring for anyone that's shopping. And I think it's going to be a res more responsible market. Mm -hmm. which a lot of people have been waiting for every time, you know, like these people, it, 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 yeah, rates are low. It's like, Oh, amazing. Go shopping. And then the prices go up and then the rates go up and everyone's like, Oh my God, the rates are up. I'm never going to be able to afford a home. Like I can't do it. It's like, well, dude, it's, it's relative. And also it's more responsible. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. I've said it a million times, like, you know, the rates never, I don't think they ever should have gone personally below 3% because 3% is like a, that's just kind of like a nice number that is manageable. It can keep things mm -hmm. in line. And, you know, things got out of control. So now it's just getting back to where I, where I think it should be anyways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no more free money, but people keep, like, like we say, we could just talk about this forever. <laughs> people like to complain. And, and until, we hit a <laughs> until we hit a recession and the rates come <laughs> falling right back 
give it yeah. give it a year right. and a half and we'll uh, and the bond market will be back down to the uh, the bottom barrel same with the prime <laughs> brock and i brock and i were talking about this on the uh i did a podcast episode with him those are coming up i got one with paul and one with brock so far and uh we were just saying like, you know, it's, it's the same thing. He's like, it's the cycle. It happens all the time. People don't understand it. It's like, once you mm-hmm. understand it, you're, you'll be much happier yeah. <laughs> learning how to work, work with it. Right. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It's really, you, you know, it's, it, it's exactly that working within the confines of the cyclical market. I mean, when you look at the historical pattern, you can see, you know, that it, that history tends to repeat itself. We don't have a crystal mm-hmm. ball. I always say to people, we don't have a crystal ball, but if history tells us anything, we're going to yeah. climb, we're going to plateau, we're going to drop, we're going to stabilize, we're going to build back up, and that bottom is going to be is going to be is that bottom is going to be higher than the previous bottom, and Absolutely. it's going to and then it's and then it's going to climb and then it's going to dip and then it's going to climb again and it's yep. it's going to happen. And that's the same with rates as well; they'll climb. You know, right now we're seeing the highest rates we have in you know in a really long time and in. in you know, over a decade. Um, but a lot, most of that is due to the, the, you know, many different influences of still coming out of the pandemic, all the stimulus that continued to pump into the market, driving up that they should have cut off stimulus. So much, many, mm-hmm. many, many months ago, if not even mm-hmm. a year ago, um, bond buybacks, things like that, mortgage backed security buybacks, and then you've got, you know, obviously an unfortunate war in Ukraine um, that influencing a lot of things with regards to oil and, and CPI. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of these influences, but with all that said, it's still, history is still going to repeat itself. You know, we're still going to have these high rates and, and, and even more so that's where people should really not look to lock in. I, I know I keep saying it every week, basically, but look at a variable. There's such a big spread mm-hmm. if you're in, in your, if you're a home buyer. And you're shopping right now, which is a great time to do, to be honest, because there is those options like Greg talking about his listing in Cumberland that hasn't sold yet. You know, um, you've got a, a lot of options out there. Go with a variable so that as the market does come back down, like as far as rates are concerned, that you have that option of, you know, refinancing into a lower rate. If fixed is what you want, get into a variable right now. And as the bond market comes down over the next year, then convert into a mm-hmm. fix because you have that ability with a variable rate mortgage to lock into a fix, but going into it right now, at you know, four and a half percent on a Scotia five-year fixed is not, would not be worthwhile. It's, you know, this is the highest it's been in over a decade. They'll come back down. It's just, there's a lot of stimulus right now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where the prices go. I think, you know, for those higher priced homes um, and where prices will go, I think we've kind of touched on that, um, you know, that they will kind of, st- stabilize, you know, like you said, I think Greg, you, you mentioned people are listing more, you know, they've been listing them more at what they're looking for um, and not driving. Like, it's not the multiple offer drive anymore. So I think they'll, well, it's, there, there is still the multiple offer and it's not it's like, I think we're, we're going to get closer to that. We're getting closer to that, but what's happening is like, there's a lot of homes are listing really low. Yeah. And then they're getting, and then they're getting closer to what that they may have just sold, like for example, if a house is listing at six fifty now and selling for seven twenty five, that place would have been listed for seven hundred like mm-hmm. a month ago mm-hmm. and probably sold for maybe seven thirty five forty. Yeah. Anyways, it's 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 slight, but yeah, uh, it's fun to watch. Yeah, you know, and it's I, fun, like I have a lot of buyers who are just you know they're they're waiting. And I said, you know, that's fine. We're looking like we're seeing stuff, but it's fun. Like we can actually go out and see more properties than just one at a time, one or two at a time. We're not freaking mm-hmm. out. And they, they've got selections. I saw a few yeah. last week that are still sitting on the market and they're clearly they're overpriced. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It'll be, uh, it'll certainly be, it'll be interesting to see if people that have been, that were buyer. There's, there's a lot of buyers out there. All they are just headline reading and getting scared <laughs> is really, and, and they kind of sit yeah. in the wings and wait for, you know, what they believe is being that better market condition. Um, that market condition is, is really, is, are there options for you to buy out there? Are there, is there the ability of getting conditions on that offer so that you can feel more confident going in and not so, you know, it's not so nerve wracking, especially as a first time home buyer, you know, not having to go into, you know, multiple offer or being able to see properties like you know right now that is that market it's not 
I, you know, rates are not ideal right now, but there are options where you could do a shorter term fixed or, or a variable rate and still get yeah. pretty good rates. Um, but the, the, you know, those people that are sitting in the background really, you know, I think it'll be, it's a good opportunity for those people. You're not going to have, you're not competing with investors. You're not, you're not competing with foreign buyers anymore. Um, even though they didn't contribute really at all to the market, uh, here much anyways, but, um, you know, there are, there are a number of groups that are being removed from that buyer segment that, that now is, is going to be a great time. So I think that's, I think it's a great, yeah, it's a great year to buy, just stay focused and get the right advice. I mean, um, oh great. I just lost my train of thought here. I had something very, very special to say. Now I have something profound. David, I had something profound. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, the the RBC. So the RBC statement about they think it's going to go thirteen percent this year, right? And at the beginning of the year, uh, I think it's going to go about seven percent increase this year. Personally, some people think it's going to go even lower than that, but RBC thought thirteen percent, and I. I was kind of surprised by that. Cause that's quite a big gain still, mm-hmm. yeah. you know um, I don't think that's going to happen, but I think that's another thing that people are looking at and maybe getting afraid of. Cause if there's a 13% gain, with the rates going up and everything, it's another headline grabber, right? They just got to mm-hmm. talk to a professional and make sure that they know what's going on in their market at their price point and get the right lender information and just move ahead. Stop reading the headlines. Yeah. Listen to top uh, rep. <laughs> well, I, I would say read those headlines, but read the articles. Don't just read the headlines. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's true. Right. Read the And it's funny because some of those, you read those, you read through them. Then when you get like midway, it's like, okay, well, there's the real information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's buried we at do the it bottom. Too. We do it too, don't we? On top yeah. rep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Line We're looking for that clickbait. <laughs> Oh man. Anyways. All right. And well, we don't, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any, uh, mood boost for people out there. Cause you know, no. we weren't, Paul's the we mood weren't, booster. uh, yeah, we weren't, pre- we weren't prepped for that. So this is when people fall off anyways. <laughs> <That's> a- <laughs> no one's, no one's listening to us ramble on anymore. Anyways. Okay. Let's end it up. All right. The Ottawa real estate podcast, also known as toe rep. I'm Greg Campbell. That's David Warren. Shout out to North brew coffee. Go to their website, type in, tw- uh, what is it, podcast? <laughs> podcast. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not used to doing it. Type, type in, in podcast. podcast for a 20% discount on your on your favorite coffees. Delicious, delicious coffees that we enjoy. That I drink in my agency mug. And don't forget to like, right, subscribe, Dave. share. Yes. Have a Thank wonderful you. week, everybody. <laughs> All right. Later. Deuces. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe because we'd really like that.